And so, friends, we, we often uh, have in mind uh, a picture of who God is. And today we're going to talk about God as the one who always acts compassionately or with compassion towards us. Um, so that's what today is about. But more about that later on. And I'm handing us over to the music team to lead us through a few songs of worship and praise. Good morning, so you, would you mind standing and singing with us as we enter this time of praise? Teach me to dance to the beat of your heart. Teach me to move in the power of your spirit. Teach me to walk in the light of your presence. Teach me to dance to the beat of your heart. Teach me to dance to the beat of your heart. Teach me to move in the power of your spirit. Teach me to walk in the light of your presence. Teach me to dance.
Let's pray. Gracious God, thank you that you wash our fears away. You make our lives new again. You give us strength during dark times. We welcome here. We welcome you here, Lord Jesus. In your precious name, Amen. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to our 9.30 service on this Sunday. Really good to be here with you all. And to those who are watching live stream, you are welcome too. And thank you for tuning in. Friends, we have received one flower message for this week, and it is the following. Fond memories of Abby, who passed away four years ago. His absence is surely missed, but he lives on in our hearts forever, Yvonne, Taryn, and Lauren. So that's our flower message for this week. Can I just remind those who are watching live stream that you are welcome to greet one another, uh, to give, give us a thumbs up, um, to say hello to, to one another. Um, good. So welcome to all of you. If you are visiting here or for the first time, very special welcome to you. Good to have you here with us. Let us pray. <coughs> Gracious God, we, we thank you that we can come in this moment to lift our hearts and our minds our lives to you in an act of worship as we bring to you our praises we know that you hear us and we are grateful 
You are indeed a God who is compassionate and loving, and our hearts are filled with, with gratitude uh, for who you are, the ways in which you are revealed to us through the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ. We thank you that in your Spirit we can come together, and in your Spirit we can worship, praise, and thank you. We thank you that you have brought us here together this morning. <clears throat> we thank you for all that which is good and noble in this world. We thank you for one another, for our families and friends, for the many ways in which you continue to bless us. <clears throat> we are indeed grateful. We know that so often we have turned away from you. Help us to rediscover you again as the God who is indeed compassionate. For so often we have learned to, to look at you with different eyes, seeing you as someone that you are not. And so this morning we say that we are truly sorry and that we repent of all our sins. But even as we do so, we hear your words of grace. Your sins are forgiven. And we thank you for those wonderful words knowing that you continue to renew us, to make us holy as we continue to walk closer to Jesus. We pray this in his holy name. Amen. Amen. <coughs> I have something in my throat. Will you allow me to just get a sip of water? It's somewhere around here. <laughs> Thank you, Tony. Thank you. There we are. It's better to interrupt the service than continuing with something in one's throat. Friends, um, Today we want to talk a little bit about our inheritance as Christians. Um, we do have an inheritance. We have received from God through Jesus' life and death something very special. We are co-heirs with Christ, the Bible tells us. So speaking about inheritance, I read this uh, the other day, that there was a certain Louis de Camara, he was a Portuguese aristocrat, and this is a true story. And he selected randomly from a people from a Lisbon telephone directory to inherit from him, to be his heirs. He picked them in the presence of two witnesses some 13 years before his death. He was never married, married and was childless and died at age 42. Now just imagine the reaction of uh, the people. Some of those he picked couldn't believe their good fortune. Others were so shocked that they thought they were being scammed. Just imagine your name being randomly selected from a telephone book and you inherit uh, a great, um, uh, great fortune. Um, I think this is the stuff that dreams are made of. But of course, we do, we do not only inherit from others uh, material wealth. We also inherit from others. Um, our inheritance is also made up of our identity, uh, the way in which we live, uh, our traditions. And, and so we inherit from those who have gone before us quite a lot of things. From our ident identity, the way in which we live our lives, and so on. And I think often these other things 
are more powerful than the material wealth we may inherit from them. But let me read to you a story about an inheritance and how some have responded to that. Um, and I'm going to read to us from the Gospel of Luke, from chapter 15. Luke chapter 15, verses 1 to 3, and then again from verse 11. Now the tax collectors and sinners were all gathering around to hear Jesus. These were all the bad people. But the Pharisees and the teachers, all the good people of the law, the teachers of the law, the Pharisees, muttered, This man welcomes sinners and eats with them. They were deeply offended by Jesus' behavior. And Jesus then continued, There was a man who had two sons. The younger one said to his father, Give me my share of the estate. So the father divided his property between them. Not long after that, the younger son got together all he had, set off for a distant country, and they squandered his wealth in wild living. After he had spent everything, there was a severe famine in that country, and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to a citizen of that country who sent him to his fields to feed pigs. He longed to fill his stomach with the pods that the pigs were eating, but no one gave him anything. When he came to his senses, he said, How many of my father's hired servants have food to spare? And here I am, starving to death. I will set out and go back to my father, and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. So he got up and went to his father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion for him. He ran to his son, threw his arms around him, and kissed him. The son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Quick, bring the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Bring the fattened calf and kill it. Let's have a feast and celebrate. For the son of mine was dead, and he's alive again. He was lost and is found. So they began to celebrate. Meanwhile, the oldest son was in the field. When he came near the house, he heard music and dancing. So he called one of the servants and asked him what was going on. Your brother has come, he replied, and your father has killed the fattened calf because he has him back safe and sound. The older brother became angry and refused to go in. So his father went out and pleaded with him. But he answered his father, Look, all these years I have been slaving for you and never disobeyed your orders. Yet you never gave me even a young goat so I could celebrate with my friends. But when the son of yours, who has squandered your property with prostitutes, comes home, you kill the fattened calf for him. My son, the father said, You are always with me and everything I have is yours. But we had to celebrate and be glad, because this brother of yours was dead and he's alive again. He was lost and he's found. It's just so far in God's word, and we thank God for God's word. Amen. Amen. So friends, here we have the story of a father and two sons, and an inheritance. So the one son asked his father for his inheritance, for his part of the estate, and he decided to take that 
and go and squandered it all, to throw it away. The other son decided to stay and held on to it. Now, when you think about this parable and the audience that we spoke about when we read those first three verses, on the one hand, the bad people, and on the other hand, the good people, this parable is, in some sense, the story about the law. You know, at the time, uh, and it is still so today, um, people of the Jewish faith, um, they base their relationship with God, their religion, on what is known as the law. In other words, those principles, those rules, those um, guidelines, as it were, to direct um, this um, relationship between God and God's people. And we do it very much in the same way, you know. We have our own things in which we use to, to, to know what it is to be in a relationship with God and what that is about and who God is and who we are and what it means to be a faithful follower of God and so on. And so that parable is about the one son going away from his home. In other words, he leaves behind all of that, all that his father and his community has taught him over many years of what it means to be a, a follower of God, to be a member of this community of God's people. And he decided to, to take all of that and throw it away and go to some far place. The other son decided to, to stay with that, to not throw it away as the younger son was doing, but to stay with the traditions and with his father who taught him and, and so on. And so some would say that that's what that story is about, that God has gifted God's people with a, a great inheritance, the law, and how, how must one respond to that? What must one do with that great inheritance? What must one do with that? So the one son threw it all the way. The other son, when the younger son returned, used it in a misplaced way. He, he used the, the law in a way it wasn't meant to be used. So both sons, eventually in that story, both their actions were questionable in terms of how they responded to this inheritance, to what God has gifted them with, the law, uh, that which they, base, which they used to, to base their relationship with God upon. But eventually, the youngest son, so that was the, what that parable is about in the first place. But eventually, the youngest son came to his senses. Now, let me tell you that coming to your senses takes hard work. It just does, it doesn't just happen. You need to really work hard at coming to your senses. <laughs> of course, it happens within the within God's grace and God's assistance and God's help and God's spirit. But eventually you have to do the hard work to come to your senses. So the younger son did that. He did the hard work. Yeah, on the inside. He did it. And he decided to go back to his father. Um, but the moment he decided to go back, somehow the story changed, changes, changed. Um, when he decided to go back to what he had thrown away earlier on, 
And that was why he was where he was then, because he threw all of that away. Um, what God has gifted him with, his traditions, his, the way of life, uh, God's self in many ways. Um, so he decided to go back. But in deciding to go back, he was expecting things to be as it was when he left. His father was going to be like this, and this is what he was going to say to his father, and this is how his father would react, what he was praying for. His father would react and appoint him as one of his hired servants so that he has at least something to eat, um, and so on. In other words, he was expecting his father to act within the law, that which he left behind. Um, but when he got there, he, he found something was different. He left behind one thing and found something else on his return. And when he got there, his father reacted with compassion. His father reacted with compassion. Now I am sure that even though he expected his father to react, to react in terms of what the requirements of the law was, that the regulated behavior for them as God's people, that when he he left behind the law and all of that to go somewhere else. What was hidden for him? And, and also, as we will see later on in the story, what was hidden for the, the older brother was that all along, God is a God of compassion. God always acts out of compassion. But the law somehow hid that from them. It became obscure because of how they started using what God has, has gifted them with. Instead of it becoming something life-giving for them, it became a burden in many ways. So you can understand the son's eagerness to leave behind what became a burden. To go and squander it rather than, than stay with it. Because somehow that God was a God of compassion, got lost in all of that. And you can see it in in how the older son reacts to his younger brother, to, to his father being compassionate. He became angry. How can you be so compassionate? Surely, surely, there's a different way you should react. According to the law, there's a different way. So, as much as the story is about the two sons, and how they reacted differently to the inheritance of their father. It is about a father who is suddenly rediscovered as one who is compassionate. Somehow they have forgotten that. Somehow, in the way in which they were brought up in their traditions, in the very law that was supposed to give them life, they have lost knowing that God was compassionate. So the question this parable is asking of us is simply this. How do we react to a God who is compassionate? For the youngest son, the moment he rediscovered that, he embraced it because suddenly 
it gave him life again. And he embraced the celebration the Father gave to him. A celebration born out of compassion. The older son turned his back on it. He became angry, upset, couldn't embrace such a generous, compassionate father. How do we react? What do we do with a God who is compassionate? Perhaps we too need to rediscover God as one who always acts with compassion. Now I know that it is not always so easy. We are in many ways like those two sons. We have also inherited something wonderful in Jesus. God has gifted us with a great inheritance. Life itself, wholeness, healing, redemption, salvation, all those wonderful words, words we use, but we don't always know exactly what they mean. <laughs> God has gifted us with a great inheritance in Jesus. So on the one hand, the question is, what do we do like those two sons with our inheritance? Some of us may want to, to leave it all behind and go somewhere else. Some of us may hold on to it, but then use it in ways that it's not meant to be used. So in many ways, we can be like, like those two sons. Some of us may also need to do the hard work to come to our senses. So maybe that's where we are in that story. How do we respond to a God who is compassionate, who always reacts to us with compassion? Now, I think one of the things that is standing in our way is this. Sometimes there's a deep conflict within us that stops us or may hinder us, even if it's just for a while, to begin to discover God as one, as a God who is always compassionate. And it is this. I don't know what you think of fathers. Um, you know, sometimes I think we have this, this image or this picture of what fathers are supposed to be like. And sometimes that picture is, a far, is one of a father who must be the enforcer. the one who, who lay, lays down the rules, the one who must make sure that those rules are being followed. And don't you dare step out of line. I will call your father, <laughs> your dad, beware. And I think sometimes that's who our fathers are. And sometimes we think that's all that they are. I don't want to go back home when I've, I've gone away because I know what's waiting for me. I know who's going to stand there and wait for me to come back <laughs> and what's going to happen. I know it. So I'm afraid. Fathers are... 
are people who, who, makes us, who make us afraid. They fill us with fear. But let me say to you today that fathers are soft and gracious too. That fathers are compassionate. That fathers can act with great love and compassion. They can be soft. They can be soft. Why can't God be like that? Sometimes God is like this image we have of fathers as enforcers. But here in this parable, we see how two sons rediscover a father who is very different. Very different. He acts with compassion. With love. With tenderness. With joy. With celebration. Our fathers are like that too. They can be like that. Friends, this is a parable which invites us into the storyline so that we too may rediscover God as someone who acts with compassion towards us. If we should find our way away from God, squandering our inheritance that God has gifted us with in Jesus, we can go back because God is a God of compassion if we should hold on to our inheritance but use it in wrong ways. We can let go of those ways because God is compassionate. It is a pity that so often inheritances are wasted. There's an Afrikaans saying, erfgeld is swerfgeld. You know that one? We waste what we inherit from others. We got it for free, so we waste it. Not, don't place too much value on it. It's easy. Easy money. It's a pity that it is like that. Our greatest inheritance is that God is a God of compassion. That's our inheritance. God has, give, has given us that for eternity. It's what you have inherited from God, what God has given to you to hold on to, to, to use. How will you use that? Like the younger son, let go of all the previous stuff about God and simply embrace a God who is compassionate. Or are we still a little bit like that older son? It can't be. It can't be. Let's hold on to the old one. It can't be. So God has given us this great inheritance that God, and we can know God as a God of compassion. Friends, and that is something we can celebrate. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you that you are indeed a God of compassion. <clears throat> Whatever our picture of you, O oh God, if it's not one in which you are compassionate, Help us to get rid of it. Help us to embrace you so that we may find life again, so that we may not be lost. Help us to discover or rediscover you again as someone with great compassion, that if we've been away from home, we can go back without fear, 
for you are waiting for us with great celebration. We are grateful. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And so I'm going to hand us over to the music team so we respond through our next song. Please remain seated if you'd like. This next song is fairly new, so you might appreciate the words sitting down listening to it. There was one when I was young who knew my heart, he knew my sorrow, he had
Forever. 